Hey, hey, hey! Welcome back to RM Podcast FL. This is your favorite podcaster, Romina. Hope everybody's having a tremendous and a fabulous day so far. And if you are here already, you know what time it is. It is time for a new episode. Most likely it's Tuesday, but if you are listening to this episode any other day, well, hope your day is going fabulously as well as... (laughs) Well, today's episode, it is Bob Broom. I had the pleasure of connecting with Bob through spotaguest.com, which is a great and amazing platform for all my podcasters out there. Spotaguest.com. No, they're not sponsoring me. I just think they're amazing. I connected with amazing people through their platform. So go ahead and definitely look it up. So um, Bob Broom, he is a professional speaker, you guys. He's an author and he's an encouragement engineer serving corporates, sales, and youth organizations with energetic encouragement for positive action. Um, That's what we are all about in this podcast. Bob also serves the IT industry by bridging the gap between IT and other departments so team can work um, and achieve corporate objectives. Now, he is a top seller of six books, and he has been a guest on national recognized audio and television shows and published in nationally recognized publications such as USA, USA Today, Computer World, Tech Media Reports, and TheStreet.com regarding his encouraging messages for many groups. I'm really excited about this episode, you guys. Um, as you can tell from the episode, I actually focus a little bit more in the IT world and how the technology has changed within the last 25 years, as well as how we can better protect ourselves. I don't know if you guys are aware, but October, it is Cybersecurity and National Awareness Month as well. We all use our phones, we all use our computers, but how we can better protect ourselves from today's technology. So Bob will give us some tips tips and tricks in there too as well as we do get a little bit more in details towards what he is mostly passionate about so i'm really excited about this episode i will let you guys enjoy it and do not forget tell your friends your coworkers, your family anybody everybody about this podcast we're growing more and more on every day you guys so if you do like this episode go ahead and give us a give us a five star because it takes a lot of energy, you guys, to bring this episode to you. And I'm loving this. I get to learn a lot more myself, too. But without losing any time, let's dive right into today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys, and investing your time towards RM Podcast FL. Just like I did mention on the bio, today's guest is an IT guru. His name is Bob Brum. Hi, sir. How are you today? Good, Ramina. How about you? I am good. I'm excited. And we had a little, a little bit of difficulty trying to make everything work with Zoom today. I feel like Zoom hates me today, but we're all set right now. I'll go ahead and uh, pass on the mic to you. Tell us a little bit about Young to today. Let us know you better. Well, thank you, Ramina. Um, my name is Bob Brum. I'm in Florida. I am a 25-year veteran of the IT industry. Um, I'm also a, I found out that there's a lot of things that people can add value within that industry so i'm a speaker as well and so i call myself the it geek that can speak a lot of times and i help to show people a positive perspective because not only in the it field but in life we go through life events and those life events will you know they can hit us hard they can hit us low and sometimes we don't know what to do with it we don't know what to get out of it so the idea of keeping a positive perspective helps everybody not only in it but in life to keep going, to keep moving forward and to look at things in a positive manner, because I think that's important. While this world is turning, we need to have the best trip we can take. So I think being positive about that is much better than being negative. Absolutely. Now, a lot of people are going to say you live in Florida. So of course you're positive because the weather is awesome down there. So to those people, I tell them, (laughs) well, move into Florida because we are in Jacksonville. (laughs) There you go. I, I've, we've, as we've talked before, we've experienced that weather up north, so we're familiar with you guys up north. Um, sorry for your scenario, but you have the ability to come on down as well. Absolutely. We'll welcome you, people. <laughs> and then, uh, Bob, tell me a little bit more. How did you get into the IT world? I mean, you're a 25-year vet right now. I'm sure you've seen technology. Like, t- technology 25 years ago is not the same as today. So tell me about your first steps there. 
Well, it was interesting because my first steps, I came out of school with a business degree in uh, business administration and accounting. I was actually working for a CPA firm. And one of the senior partners, the owner of the firm said, you know what, you need to do something a little bit different because he could tell I couldn't just sit still a lot. And so I went back to my college alma mater. They were having a job fair and I saw this company. It was a telecommunications company and they said, well, we're looking for people with a degree. I said, well, I got that. Woohoo. Step one. Um, and people willing to work. I said, woohoo. Step two. I said, where do I apply? So I filled out an application, went in for some interviews. Lo and behold, I was hired on with them two weeks later and started my journey in telecommunications and IT. And as in the late 90s, things started to blend uh, telecommunications and IT. So that led me into the scenario of working in IT because voice over IP technology, this type of technology, it all runs on an IT platform. And so that's what got me into this environment. And it's one of those environments that it's constantly changing and you're constantly moving and you're constantly learning. No, definitely. And you can tell you have a student mentality that you always want to learn more and strive for better, which I think is absolutely very important for, for uh, student mentality is very important for everybody to have, honestly, because especially in the IT world where every day something different is changing. Like we literally have a computer on our phones right now on day to day basis. Oh, definitely. And it's, it's interesting to watch when you go into business lobbies, and you don't see people talking to each other anymore. They're, they're on their screens, they're on their little computers, they're texting, they're doing things, they're looking everything up. And so sometimes the technology, we've got to put it away to remember we're people and we're people first. And we need to remember that concept of, you know, try to talk to, try to interact with people. It might be interesting in how you, the people you learn and what you learn about them. Do you think the more the technology is going to advance, the more people are going to forget how to have a like how to have a talk or a conversation? Well, let me ask you this question. Um, you're younger than I am, so when you were in school, did they teach you cursive writing? No. Okay. Did they teach you checkbook balancing? Yes. Okay. Good. That's one of the few things that those two concepts you don't see that much anymore. People can type. Kids can type with their thumbs, their thumbs so fast, they don't have a typing class anymore. They don't have that. A lot of the communication skills aren't there because these kids are focused on, they, they can communicate through technology, but when you get them one-on-one -on -one or in a group scenario, speaking, that is hard for people. That communication of not only one-on-one, -on -one, but a bigger group. And that's what corporate environments are going to need in the future. They're going to need people that can explain the technology, that can talk to the officers or those people approving the budgets for the technology. You got to be able to explain in layman's terms what goes on with that technology. And I think that's critical in today's society. Where do you think the technology, especially when it comes to phones, is going to be in the next 20 to 25 years? Oh, we'll probably have a chip in our, you know, somewhere in our body that will you know, you'll, you won't even have to explain what you need at the grocery store. I say, oh, Bob's coming in. Here's his list. Let's go get all this stuff. And there'll be a cart waiting with your name on it probably or something. You know, or it may be delivered to you. You don't even have to. It's getting to the point where you don't have to get up and do anything anymore. You know, you can have everything delivered to your house, which is convenient if you have such a busy schedule. But at the same time, you know, it's interesting to get out of the house once in a while. Get some good old, you know, sunshine, some vitamin D. Get outside and feel the air. Yep, and you you live to Florida, so you definitely need to do that. <laughs> no, it's a little easier to get outside. <laughs> right, you step outside and you're good, <laughs> and then you're gonna run back inside because it's way too hot, <laughs> yeah. especially in the summertime. <laughs> so October is the National Cybersecurity Awareness Month, and um, as we know, people are using technology more and more. I mean, right now we have a TV in everybody's rooms in the household. We have everybody has a computer, everybody has a, has a phone. Maybe sometimes individuals have two phones because one is only work related. What can we do to protect ourselves uh, with from this uh, from this advancement? Because we have a lot of breaches that are happening, like Equifax breach or Capital One. Like, what can the normal individual do to protect themselves? Well, all those connections come in through usually a router, which is a main point of your house, um, whether that's through the cable company or a carrier. 
or if you have a router behind it, make sure to put security measures on that. You can put on your own password. You can put on encryption codes onto those devices so people can't get through that device. It's like your front door. You lock your front door maybe with two or three locks or two different systems. Do the same thing with your computer equipment so that it gets locked down so people can't get in there. And everything today is Bluetooth. So make sure to have passwords that are identified that you know can protect each device. And it, what are you going to? Look at the sites you're going to. Make sure that you have proper software in place that can block some of the things you may not want to be have come on your computer. A lot of these applications, for instance, that you put on your phone, first thing they require is, oh, well, we want to know your location. I don't need you to track my location. Turn that off. If you don't need to have that on, obviously for the mapping features or those type of apps, you need it. But other apps, really, does Facebook really need to know where you are at all times? Not really. You know, turn those things off so people don't necessarily know your whole life without you telling them. That is so true because you can, like Snapchat, for example, a lot of people have their location on and you can tell at any time when they, where they are with exact coordinates. And it's, this is such a privacy that I don't need to know where you are, where you are, somebody else needs to know where I'm at. But I feel like especially teenagers and people in their 20s don't take this as serious. Well, and as a parent, I understand. You want to know where your kids are going. You want to make sure they're safe. However, there does come a point, like you said, when you get into your 20s, maybe, okay, you're an adult. You don't need to have other people tracking you because there could be people out there that you don't want part of your life that will all of a sudden show up because they know exactly where you are. And you don't need that. I mean, we've seen it in the movies, and there's a reason they put it in the movies because subliminally it could be happening and it may be happening. We don't need that. Which is a little scary to think of, but I feel like technology, as great as it is, it's with its investments, it does have its challenges too. That we need to be cautious. And yeah, like anything, it will. We've got to be careful. We learn about the technology, both the good, the bad, the ugly. We've got to take those things into consideration and just note that you know these are things we need to like any new technology. We've got to learn all the ins and outs about it, and it's important to look at those scenarios and know what they are. Absolutely. Now let's focus a little bit more on the marketing technology, IT portion of it. So you are in the marketing area. Um, how has online marketing changed over the years too? Because online marketing right now is a whole different world than what it was before. And I read in an article recently just Facebook because Facebook has decided to allow even more ad, ad, you know, ads on the videos and stuff. It just increasing crazy on the revenue. So like how like, how is it different? What was it 20 years ago when the internet just first came out? It was not, you had uh, snail mail, you had, you know, hard mail, if you will. That was your marketing features. You had billboards, you had different scenarios. It wasn't bombarding you at a rate that it is today. I mean, yeah, you turn on your phone a little bit on Facebook and you get inundated with ads and all of a sudden it's because you searched something on your phone and all of a sudden you had an interest in this and these ads start popping up. So the algorithms they're using are important for them for marketing purposes, but for you all of a sudden you're getting a lot more feeds and a lot more information thrown at you um, that all of a sudden you're you're swimming and it doesn't allow people to really make a full decision again that's another thing that you need to look at and say if there's something you're interested in look into the details of it on your own don't just make an uneducated choice of oh this one because you can find you're either paying a lot a lot more than you need to or it's not doing what you want to and so that's a, an important piece is that understanding of the technology that understanding of what you're trying to do with your market and who you're marketing to would you say, though, that the companies are somehow making pressure sales with having a thousand add-ons everywhere because the market, like, it's such a competitive market nowadays that you don't have just one company or you have 10 companies offering the same thing. So there's no other way for them to, 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 to have, you know, to do pressure sales. Well, and that it is a competitive market. Um, they're going to argue it's not pressure sales because we're not really pressuring you. But when you send... 40 ads a day plus, you know, technically it gets down to pressure. Do you care about that pressure or not? That's up to you. So it's just like a billboard ad. You could see a billboard ad going down the freeway 
and there's 50 billboards. It's the same concept. You don't have to pay attention to any of them, or you could pay attention to one that says, oh, I need gas. I need that gas station. There's a sign. Let's go there. So it's up to you to be able to limit that inundation to your mind and to what you're doing so you don't get overwhelmed. If there is something specific you want and you see an ad, oh, that reminds me, research it, understand it, follow up either with that company or another one that you may find interest in so you can, you know, see what, what they have to offer that meets your needs. The biggest thing I think with the marketing today is a lot of times the social media marketing doesn't even look at what your needs are. They're looking at an algorithm, but they, they don't know Ramina. They don't know Bob. They don't know who you are. They don't know that maybe you looked at this, but you're not interested in it. They don't know what your situation is. And I think when you get into a marketing or a sales position with a one-on-one -on -one person, you discuss who you are, what you're looking for, what your issues are that you're trying to resolve. And you get that understanding. And I think that's important. So you did bring up a very good point, uh, going back to the sales and the one-on-one -on -one conversation. So I actually do want to jump a little bit to your speaking events. So we got to know you a little bit better, 25 years in IT. We got to know how you start in the IT world. And of course, your student mentality is on point because throughout the 25 years, there have been so many changes. Like try to tell somebody 25 years ago, that you're going to have a phone in your hands and it's going to do this. They're going to look at you. They're going to say, what are you on? Like you are insane yeah. right now. <laughs> but here we are today. And then now you're also into speaking events and you are a keynote speaker. How did you get started? That it's always been something I've always wanted to do. However, I saw a, I was at, back in college and I actually saw in a written out ad for Toastmasters, a Toastmasters meeting. And the way they wrote that, I thought I wouldn't want to be anywhere near that meeting. They just, they didn't, the marketing for that, whoever wrote that just did not do a good job. It was horribly written, and it made it sound like a roast fest. I'm like, who wants to be a part of that? Well, getting into the organization I'm in now, a coworker said, hey, why don't you come to this Toastmasters meeting with me? And I got a chance to sit down and, and meet with people and interact with people and realize what the meeting was really about. Probably 10 or 15 years later, after I saw that initial note, and, well, not even that long, but it's... Um, I got to see what it was about. And that's how I really got started. I love the idea that you can share something with somebody and show your enthusiasm, show your feelings, show that energy so that people can see a different perspective about that topic you may be talking about. And in Toastmasters, the first speech you talk about is three to five minutes about yourself. So it's something that people are comfortable with. They know themselves, they're just sharing it with others. But what it does is it helps you to build that stamina to not only, I never had a problem speaking to groups. I always loved it. And it helps people that may have that fear to overcome that and to give their message out to a small group, which gets them over that fear of more than one person, and then to larger groups. And so I just progressed through that. I did, I think one week I did five different speeches to get to my next level of speeches. I went to, I was a guest speaker at some of the different Toastmaster clubs. I met some great speakers along the way. And um, it just, it was something that really I loved doing. And so I started I had organizations in the local area were asking, well, how can we get somebody to come from your club and talk to us? Okay. Yeah, I can do that. How about this? What's good for you? And I just started doing that. And I talk at PTA meetings and then I start talking at colleges and I wrote a book and sharing that knowledge with people. And then I wrote another book and sharing that knowledge again with not only colleges and universities, but other corporate organizations in the local area as well. So that's how I got into it was just, you know, initially, like I said, I read one thing and it was not well written and I didn't go to it. But then later on, my track took me right back to it. And I thought, well, let's try this out. And again, it was a human interaction that brought me to that. So I think that's what I, with the technology, I think we need to look at that scenario. Human interaction has a lot of value. It does. And it's a, it's a lot like if, knowing how to have a conversation with someone and knowing how to hold a conversation. That's absolutely very important. And this episode will come just a little bit later, but I'll give you guys a little background story. Last night, actually, I applied for a TEDx FSCJ talk where it's about parents and children. And it's all about focus on conversation. That, And the more research I did, the more I found out how kids nowadays are not even talking to their parents because they're on their tablets. Or, yeah. you know, like... 
and it's just interaction is absolutely very important. You have to set your kid up for success. But uh, Bob, whenever if you were to have a presentation, do you have a favorite topic that you like to go to, or is it do you always depend it uh, based on the audience? It I can customize it based on the audience, but the topic I love is the idea of taking action and taking that positive action towards a goal. Uh, that's why speaking to students is important to me, not only because they're our future leaders, but the idea that you've got to take the action to get the goal, to get the result you want. I have a quote that says, if the goal is worth the reward, be prepared to take the steps necessary to get there. In other words, you have to get up and do something to go after your goal. It's not going to come to you. My most recent book was Life Don't Owe You Nothing, A Reality Check to Achieve Greatness. And it's about that idea that getting off your butt to do something is critical in our life. You know, the greatest buildings of the greatest companies were not created by somebody just sitting around saying, yeah, okay, we'll do this. No, they got up and they did something. They made a difference. They took a chance. They didn't listen to the naysayers necessarily. They said, oh, you can't do that. It's going to be hard. Yeah, it is. But that's why I'm different because I get up there and I talk about that idea of getting out there and doing that. And in the IT world, the idea that somebody gets up and speaks and can relate to an audience without the IT jibber jabber or in accounting, the you know accounting acronym soup, it's refreshing to people. I have I engage the audience and I let them have fun because we're here to have a good time and we can still progress in the technical things we need to do and the tasks we need to do, but we can also have fun. And I think interrelating all those things is, is important. Is there a bigger reason why you would say that the topic of taking actions is really something that you're passionate about? Is it something that happened in your life? <laughs> I have three boys. And so uh, my latest book was actually a writing um, from my middle son coming out of high school and he wasn't sure what to do. But at the same time, okay, go look for some talk to some people about some jobs, talk to some people about this, go get some applications. And you wanted to, you know, this generation, everything's done online first. They've sent in an application on that, but you've got to go talk to people and getting that going. It was like, are you kidding me? So that's why I wrote the book to remind people that, Hey, we need to get going. I've never been, as you can tell, I've got a little bit of energy and I've never been one to really sit still. So when my son was doing that, it was a clash and it was hard, but we, we got through it. He's doing fine. But just that aspect of having that, that little bit of mentality that, you know what, I'm just going to chill and play some video games. No, that won't get you, you know, unless you're doing it a lot and building some great cheat sheets or whatnot on YouTube to get sponsors, which takes a lot. You've got to make the effort to do something. And I mentioned it in the book you've got to get out there and get that. If you want to do that, that's great. Learn about it, understand it, but you've got to build a skill and show people the value of that skill in order to get sponsors, in order to get paid, in order to get the exposure you want. Besides your son, was there somebody else that you can rethink of from your event that your talk or your conversation had a bigger impact on their life and they've reached out back to you and said, you know what? Because of this, now my thinking is different. Um, a couple times that has happened. I had a talk that I was talking to some real estate investors, and, and the energy and the level I gave to the audience just talking about taking action, a gentleman that had been in prison for four years came up to me afterward and said, you just changed my life. He goes, I cannot go back to where it was and what I was thinking before I came here. He goes, the the energy, the, uh, you know, what you showed me, the ability to be able to go after something has got me focused so hard on moving forward in a positive direction. And I was just, you know, one of those scenarios of, oh my gosh, um, I've had that happen at um, speaking to college students too. And just the realization that, you know, wow, this is really going to happen, but it's not as scary as it can seem. I mean, some of these college students are getting towards the end of their college career and they're realizing, uh oh, now what do I do? I got to get going and helping them to realize it's not that scary, but yes, you've got to keep moving. You've got to keep the wheels turning. That really helps them to ease that burden. Or I had another scenario where a high school student said, came out to me after a talk and she said, nobody's ever told me I can do that. And I was, wow, you know, this, 
you go after your goal, people are going to tell you you can't do it, but you've got to go after it because it's with, if it's deep enough in your head and in your heart, you've got to go after it. You've got to get that goal and get the steps taken to get there where you want to go. I would say though, like a lot of children nowadays get ignored from their parents because we do live uh, in a world that we have to run in order to make a good living. And let's just be honest and not every household is living a perfect life. Like people are working two and three jobs to be able to afford life. And these kids maybe not necessarily are being ignored on purpose, but the parents or the, their mentors are not around to tell them they can do it. But then you come around just telling them one time they can do it and it just changes their whole life perspective. Well, and it's always interesting because especially with as having three boys, you could say that until you're blue in the face and they look at you like you have three heads. But Ramina, you could say that exact same thing and they hear it. So that's the advantage of having somebody else that has maybe gone through this scenario do it and, and understand and say that to them. I mean, I, I, when I was six years old, I lost my mother to cancer. Um, and then early in my life, I had a lot of deaths because my family were older. I understood that life event of death. And so I also realized the world continues to turn and we've got to take the best action we can to move forward in this world. And so, um, you know, I understand that value of, of the parents are busy. I mean, I can't imagine my dad was 47 when I was born. And so he had a new business when my mother passed away, how, you know, he's juggling all the young kids at home that he's got to take care of, got to try to nurture his wife just passed away and he's got a new business he's got to build. That's a lot. And so understanding that scenario, and I took it on myself that I wanted, to, I mean, I didn't realize this when I was six or seven. Don't make me, I'm not a prodigy by any means, but as I got older, I realized I was here for a purpose. And that purpose is to help people to see a better value in what they do and see the positive perspective in life events because life will go on life will happen and we need to continue that who would you say has been your biggest mentor or your biggest supporter oh that's a good question my biggest mentor my biggest supporter i mean my my wife is a good good supporter my mentor i read a lot so uh, my father was a great mentor i guess you could say and he he probably wouldn't have re even realized it or, or ignored it um he passed away about seven years ago and um because he was he grew up through the depression he came back from where he was world war ii he came back from that he he built his own business with two partners um he raised us when my mother had passed away and you know showed us a way of focused hard work and discipline and the advantage that has and so that would be, you know, probably my biggest mentor, if you will. Um, but I also, I read a lot of things from a lot of very smart people and very inspirational people. Uh, Zig Ziglar, Tony Robbins, Jim Rohn, um, John Maxwell, a lot of people out there that have gone through things, but they continue to go, they continue to thrive and they continue to focus. And it's by no means is it easy. I'm not saying it's a, you know, cakewalk by any means because, you know, doing these things takes time and effort and we got to make that time and effort. And I think that's, what's important. I feel like, cause you, you did say your mentor was your dad. I feel like he tried to mentor you in a different way, especially him being a world world to that. It's not necessarily with the words to be the most affirmative and, you know, like the loving with the words, but with the actions, I feel like he impacted you in your life in a different way. And maybe correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know you that much personally, but I feel like you're kind of trying to do the same with your kids. Try to show with your action and try to set them up for success. Thank you. I, I do have to agree with that because my father was, you know, they were old school and they didn't say, you know, the loving things. I mean, I try to give hugs as often as I can. Boys will be boys. It's a little harder. Um, you know, you always want to kiss them. You want to hug them. Um, but yeah, actions do speak louder than words. Anybody can say something, but uh, like everybody says, talk is cheap. Our world judges us not on our words, but on our actions. And I think that's important to know. If you really want to do something, then do it. Show people you can do it. 
and explain what your reasoning was after your success. You know, they always say, oh, it was so hard. Yeah, it was. You know, it, climbing Mount Everest, I'm sure, was not easy. You know, it's not something you're just going to get up and do, but you got to take skills, you got to take steps, you got to take action, and you take them one at a time and you can move forward. And I think that's important for people to realize. And it's funny that you, you bring up Mount Everest, it's not just going to be a jump because I always say this expression for years now. I say you have to make very, very small and safe steps to make sure that you don't fall behind and start from ground zero. So sometimes it's, it's, it's okay to take smaller steps and safer steps instead of getting very excited and making a big step and just falling backwards. So kind of the same analogy. And I use that a lot actually myself too. Or even when somebody, I see somebody frustrated, it's like, why is this not happening? I'm like, okay, this is why I learned this the hard way. Let me teach you <laughs> how I learned my lesson. <laughs> You're still in your skin knees, exactly, yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, Bob, if you were to, um, like, for your kids, what legacy would you like to leave to your sons right now? Because you are raising three sons, three gentlemen that are going to create their own families and they're going to have their kids and just the, the cycle is going to continue. But what legacy would you like to leave behind? Like, what would you love to teach your sons that they say, Dad told me this? The first thing that comes to mind is, is love the one you're with. I know that's corny and it's a song title, but it, seriously, because that has a lot of weight and a lot of bearing. Um, you don't want to be miserable in your life. Love the one that's with you because going through all these things you go through raising a family, that person's going to be really strong and very loving and very forgiving. So knowing that is important. And finding that right person is important. The other thing is work hard because nobody's going to hand you anything. And the harder you work, not only does it build your strength to make you stronger, but you'll get what you want and what you need in life. And understanding that is important. So, but um, also realize <laughs> we're all people. Okay. We're people first. We're not machines. We're not a technology. We're people. And yeah, sometimes call your mom and dad. <laughs> you know, just pick up the phone and talk to them. I know it's crazy. Don't text them, but say hi. Come over and say hi. Our refrigerator still works. And I know, like, especially with boys, the first thing they do, they come in the house and the door swings open to the refrigerator. So, you know, come on over. We're okay with that. <laughs> I love how you, you mentioned the, the last part. We're humans. I feel like sometimes we forget to have the human side on, on you know, our everyday lives because we're running nonstop. We're trying to do this, this, and that. And we forget about who we love, who who we want to help, who we want to impact. Yes, it is a bigger picture helping others, but at the end of the day, family, it's it's very, very important. I feel yeah, like and you can be late to practice once in a while. It's not gonna hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I feel like we covered some really great topics. I don't know if there's anything else you would like to uh to mention before I do jump to the final question as we all know what the final question is well i just if i could i'll just i'll mention that if people are looking to contact me um i have my website out there is bob brum speaks b-o-b-b-r-u-m-m -M speaks.com and i've got seven books listed out on my website i've got my social media connections so feel free to contact me if i can help you i'd love to I do a one minute motivational video every day that's out there as well. It's on our social media channels as well as Spotify. Um, and so that's a, another source out there uh, about what I do. So if I can help you, I'd be glad to do that. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll attach all your information on the, on the details of the episode too. And if you guys do definitely want to get in touch with him, he is really awesome. I have to say this, we actually had an offline call before we even jump to this one, that was supposed to be like a 15 minute call, but it ended up more like 40 minutes. And we talked about a lot of great stuff, which I was, I'm like, I'm excited. This is the type of speakers that I want to have on my podcast speakers that motivate people. And they're actually genuinely nice people. And you know, and they're, uh, they have the laser focus that all they want to do is help themselves and help the people around them. Goodness. Uh, Bob, what is your definition of success? Well, I've been thinking about that one. My definition of success would be to do what you want, when you want, how you want, because you've worked hard, because you've loved, because you've lived. And I think that's important for people to 
realize again, there's billions and billions of people on this world and we all bleed red. Doesn't matter where you come from. If we're hurt, we hurt. If we're sad, we cry. And being able to help those from your experience, from your knowledge, from your hard work, that's a great benefit in life. So I would say that would be my definition of, of success. I like that. I have I haven't got that one yet. Do what you want whenever you want, just because you being able to do what you want whenever you want, however you want, because you worked hard for it. So it's really yeah. you rewarding yourself. That's going back to the roots of it. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's uh, you know, it's putting in the effort will pay off. It may take a while, but it definitely pays off. Oh yeah, absolutely. It might not be. Sometimes people want like that short term gratification instead of investing and like waiting for the long term win. But it will pay off. Like absolutely, everything will pay off. It just the reward. It completely bases on your effort, how much effort you put towards something. Definitely. Awesome. I feel. I thank you so much for this for investing your time again, Bob. I had. Uh, I enjoyed this conversation. I actually got to learn you. Uh, got to learn about you a little bit more and just the whole concept of how you affect people just from one speaking event. And I, I hope that, you know, it's more and more every time because that, that's really important to just even, and it's, it's kind of funny like how one word or one face can affect somebody long-term that you didn't even think it would that much, like the examples that you brought up. And uh, for all you, my listeners out there, if you do want to listen to awesome episodes like this one, make sure to tune in every Tuesday. We do have interviews with professionals of different careers and on Thursdays, we do have random bonus episodes, so definitely do not miss those out. And as always, guys, you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Stitches Radio, YouTube, Podbean, Google Play, and now on iHeartRadio as well. Thank you guys for tuning in, and have a great rest of the day.